Hello everybody, today I have for you another one of those Let's Talk videos. First up though, tape of the day is uh, Iron Maiden's Somewhere in Time. I always want to call this Wasted Years, but that just happens to be one of the songs on it. Um, this was my first Iron Maiden tape, actually. Um, I obviously was familiar with like Run to the Hills and stuff like that, but this was the first one that I had the tape of that I would listen to like kind of over and over and over. So that's fun. That's fun. It's a good one. Um, but today we're going to be talking about the last podcast on the left. So if you're unaware, the last podcast on the left is obviously a podcast. It is a true crime podcast that is honestly probably one of the most popular true crime podcasts out there. Um, it is run by um, comedian slash actor Henry Zabrowski, comedian slash politician Ben Kissel, and uh, researcher Mark, uh, slash radio host Marcus Parks. Um, and it is very, uh, honestly, I was like vaguely into true crime before I started listening to the last podcast on the left, but I was not into true crime until I started listening to the last podcast on the left. Like, for me, I started on the Casey Anthony episodes, so I was a little bit later. It was a couple years back. Um, I want to say maybe two or three years ago is when I started listening to them. Now I'm currently on a um, on a track to start. I started at the very beginning. I think I'm I'm in the uh, God. I just passed the Menendez brothers. I think I might be caught in another alien area right now, but I'm not sure. Um, but basically, um, they cover a lot of true crime things, um, serial killers, cults, stuff like that. Pretty much any major serial killer you can think of they have done episodes on, you know, Bundy, Dahmer, Gacy, that sort of thing. Um, as well as that they do sometimes take a little bit of a side note into stuff like aliens, conspiracy theories, time travel, stuff like that. And they have their, and they have a couple of episodes too where they have like viewer submitted like creepypastas or just scary stories. Um, it's a great podcast, honestly. It can come off as a little bit, um, uh, a little bit insensitive sometimes. These are a bunch of, these are three guys. I think they're all in like their late 30s. Um, all like Gen X, uh, early, no, like young Gen X, old millennial type. Um, they're, it's very interesting though because you've got three diff very different perspectives with them. Um, because they're all U.S. based, but they all and they all grew up in different parts of the United States. Um, Marcus Parks grew up in Texas. Um, ben Kissel grew up in Wisconsin, and uh, Henry Zabrowski grew up primarily in New York City, um, slash kind of Florida. It it is a little bit like unsure, especially when you listen to the earlier stuff. He talks about being from Florida, but then he does talk more about being from New York City. So I, I feel like it's kind of a half and half there. But it is, it is very interesting to hear all their different perspectives on things because their personalities really kind of come through. Um, like, it is it is so much fun. I mean, you've got Marcus Parks is probably, he's my favorite of the three. Um, he is a, he's, he's the main researcher of the show. So he does a lot of, he does a lot of the more um, actual telling of the cases and stuff like that and then the other two will react and kind of bounce off of him he is mostly seen as the most serious one but when he gets going it is hilarious like you get the, like there's a kind of running jokes about how he's like also the kind of the creepiest one and he's like he loves bones and stuff um so he, he the, there's his that that sort of that sort of personality plus ben kissel is um, he, he plays off as the straight man most of the time, where, like, Marcus and Henry will be talking about something and he'll, he, he plays the role of, like, the audience pretty much, because he plays the role of somebody who doesn't know quite as much. And it's hilarious. Sometimes it's also very exciting whenever they do, like, creepypasta episodes where they have to read stuff and they make him read and it is just, like, it is hilarious and wonderful. Um, and then Henry Zabrowski is, he was in a couple of, you know, movies and TV shows and stuff like that. Like, he had a minor role in, like, The Wolf of Wall Street. And he was in a couple of different like TV shows, like your pretty face is going to that. And he is so funny. Like he like he is just like so like gregarious and just over the top kind of funny. Um it's it is a lot of fun. He does a lot of voices and there's sometimes he goes a little bit far with his voices, especially if they're getting into like um stuff like Om Shinri Om Shinrikyo that cult um and also when he did Charles when they did Charles Ng and Leonard Blake um they had to make a point that by the way when Henry is um portraying Charles Ng 
that's actually how, what he sounded like, and he's not just being racist. So it's, it's funny. It's a really funny show. And it is, like I said, it can might be a little bit much for some people because they do kind of, they, they go all out. And they do really, I mean, they don't shy away from any of the gory details either. Like, um, they will kind of warn you a little bit when the really bad stuff's going. They call them the gold star moments. Um, but... Especially, especially the earlier episodes, like, I mean, it took them a little bit to find their stride, but once they found their stride, it honestly, it clicked, and it is, it is so good. Like, they come out with, um, and normally it's a, I don't, I don't actually know their posting schedule, actually, I'm realizing, because I'm currently catching up, um, because when I was listening to the podcast, when I started, like I said, I started with Casey Anthony, so that was, like, the early 300s, and they've got, like, coming up on, like, 500 episodes now, um, so I was, like, I did, I listened to Casey Anthony, I listened a little bit to some other stuff and then I started kind of hopping around and I was listening to the topics that interested me. So I listened to a lot of the serial killer ones um, and then I kind of hopped back and I started listening to newer ones. So I did a lot of hopping around. Now I'm going more like in order even and if I've listened to them, I'm listening to them again just so I can kind of see the progression. Um, I'm realizing that I forgot one when I, cause I'm going to be recommending some episodes at the end here and I forgot one of them. So I'm going to write that down so I don't forget about it when I'm writing. Because honestly, there is so much and honestly for me personally the uh the alien episodes and the conspiracy theory episodes are not my favorites i don't like them quite as much i mean they're they're just not as interesting to me i don't really care that much about aliens um but i listen to them and sometimes there are some funny moments but it's harder to get really invested into those ones as it is with like the serial killer or the cult ones because i am into this for the true crime i mean the true crime angle is really a a big part and I've I've been recommended so many things because of this podcast so many books honestly they did a West Memphis 3 episode and that kind of shaped my entire life right now so you can you have them to thank for my cassette collection I used to blame uh, the West Memphis 3 but really you can blame the last podcast on the left for my cassette collection so there's that but it is it is really very interesting um I've been kind of saying like why I like them because I have kind of three bullet points down because for these talking for these let's talk ones I just kind of like to go off on little tangents and stuff like that because it's supposed to be like a conversation where I just talk at you and you I mean you don't have to listen you can click out but if you're here you have to listen kind of thing um but honestly why I like it is because it is it is the humor but it is also so goddamn well researched like you like it is like you can tell just how much stuff these guys go through to kind of read and and read and watch and just learn to make these episodes both entertaining and informative because they are they are just the storytelling abilities of these guys is just out of this world like it is amazing like you both I'll say Marcus Parks and Henry Zabrowski make just like the dream team of storytellers like they're like Marcus Parks is kind of his voice is I used to listen to the last podcast on the left help me fall asleep senior year of college which might have been a mistake looking back on it uh, but just mostly because Marcus Parks' voice is just very soothing. It's just very just like, I don't know, it's, it's nice and it's, it's, it's deep, but it's not too deep. And it's just, he's a very good storytelling voice. And you got him mixed with Henry Zabrowski's kind of interjections and um, it really just kind of enhances it. And so like, that's honestly why I like it because it does, it does tell, a, it does make them into a very good story and it makes it just, it's just, it's just interesting. I do have a couple of episodes that I want to recommend. First up, Jonestown. Jonestown is a five-part, five-parter. There are five of them. Each of them is two hours long. And it is just like, man, they go in deep. Like, they start like right at the beginning of Jim Jones' life and they go all the way to the end. And there's just so much to cover with Jonestown. And I think I'm really glad that they waited until later to cover Jonestown because they were able to get so far into it um because a lot of the earlier episodes are a little bit shorter too because they didn't quite get as deep in their subjects but Jonestown they just went hard they went deep and oh man um it is it is, it, it, it is awesome it is horrifying but it is such a, it, I think it's what a lot of people view as like their magnum opus in terms of their podcast series because a lot of the heavy hitters they'll split into parts um so any major cult or serial killer, or even case in some cases, will be split into a couple of parts and normally two, normally two or three, but Jonestown had five and it was so oh, it was beautiful. Uh, then obviously the West Memphis three episodes, uh, there are three of them. 
um oh my god this the the west memphis three episodes are what brought me to what i am today um i've been here making youtube videos since senior year of high school so that's been about six years seven years oh my i don't even know so that was that was the end of, it was christmas of 2014. so six years roughly i'm coming up on my sixth year anniversary um, but when I started, I mean, I was always into like darker stuff. Like I liked Stephen King and rock music or whatever. Um, but I started getting into true crime a little bit in college. I didn't really get into true crime until I started listening to the last podcast on the left. However, the West Memphis Three case is what is like, it's not the first case that gripped me, but it's the first case that gripped me hard enough to change my entire core personality. <laughs> like not my core personality. I'm still the same. I still like, you know, books and writing and stuff like that. But like, just, oh my God, like the, they, they say right away, cause the West Memphis Three is a case that is, has, it, it's got some, some, some confusion around it in the fact that, I mean, some people still think that they did it. Some people don't think that they do. They do come right out and say, the guys do, that they don't believe that the West Memphis Three are guilty. They think that they were innocent, um, which is the right answer, by the way. Um, but, and I just remember it was my senior year of high, of not high school, college. I would take these long walks in the morning. It was like October, so it was cold. It was maybe in the 40s, not like cold, cold. It was like, uh, it was above freezing, like maybe like high 30s, low 40s. Taking a walk, listening to the last podcast on the left. And I just remember when I got to these West Memphis Three episodes, I had to take a break from the podcast after that for a while because I was the only thinking about the West Memphis Three for like months. Um, and so I just, and then I switched over to listening to music and um, Metallica and Sanitarium and Master of Puppets. And that was how that started. But I have portions of that, of those episodes, portions of that case just kind of locked in my head as parts of like this dark campus. Like there's part by a, by one of the dorms. I remember walking around and learning about, oh, what's her name? Oh, that one lady who got Jesse Miss Kelly involved in it. Um thinking about her and then I remember like I remember like going to my first class I'd, I would be listening to these episodes up until up until the, the professor got there it was just like these episodes fucking changed me they're amazing um Kuklinski Richard Kuklinski another time so I would listen to a lot of these where I powered through a lot of them same with the Jonestown ones is the summer between my junior and senior year of college I worked at a library and that summer we were um Re, we were renovating and so the main branch of the library was renovating we had the secondary branch we would sometimes go work over there sometimes we'd be in the main branch like dusting off bookshelves and moving books around and whatever um but I would listen to a lot of last podcasts on the left and so there are a couple of a couple of like children's books or like sections of libraries that I don't think of when I think of this but Kuklinski is one that I listened to a couple times um it is about the Iceman who was a he claimed to be like a mafia or a mob um, assassin kind of thing, very prolific serial killer. They're very interesting. They're they're very interesting. It's a very interesting series. I do think it's it's one of the funnier ones. Um, also, the creepy pastas. I mentioned this briefly. They do <laughs> sometimes like it, normally around October they'll have an episode where they will just read a bunch of creepy pastas, and they are so funny. Like man, like you. <laughs> They're, they're hilarious and you just you just gotta listen to them like they're fun they're funny ones um the Casey Anthony episodes like I mentioned these were my first episodes um Casey Anthony and her whole thing was one of the first true crime cases I remember being aware of um if you're unaware um in like the early 2000s Casey Anthony went on trial for possibly killing her three-year-old daughter Kaylee and I remember like standing in the grocery aisle line with my mom, like looking at like all the tabloids and seeing Casey Anthony and Kaylee Anthony just like plastered all over the front. And so it was really interesting to actually hear what the story was behind it because I was aware of the case, but I didn't know anything about it. Um, so that was really interesting. And I think they're a good, they're a good solid, just couple episode series, very short, very quick. They're interesting. Um, the Menendez brothers, another funny one, uh, Pan's Ram. I love their Pandram series. Um, Pandram is actually one where they have, it's a three part series, but they have shortened it up so that they do, they have the three part series, but you can also listen to one episode that kind of does a quick overview of the whole case. Pandram was a serial killer in the early like 1900s and he was a lot of fun. Um, I, I, not recently, recently, 
but within the past year I read his uh, his journals and honestly surprisingly good author for not having much or anything in the terms of you know formal education but the Pan's Room series is so much fun because they, they do have a lot of fun with it and the thing is with all of these there are some really ridiculous parts to all of them like the fact that Jim Jones sold spider monkeys for a while to make ends meet um, and Pandram had a thing for stealing yachts. So for a while there, they had a a, a, um, a patch up on their on their merch store that just said Pandram Yacht Club, which is hilarious because he's a fucking serial killer. Anyway, the last one that I that I actually wrote down in mid filming this to make sure I didn't remember, didn't forget it, H.H. H. Holmes. The H.H. H. Holmes episodes are so funny for one reason and one reason only. Well, many reasons, but mostly, I'm Minnie. I'm Nanny! The first time I listened to that part, I was just dying. This was um, when I had my lunch breaks at the at the, um, at the the library. Um, you could take a half hour or a full hour. I normally took took a full hour because I like to go for a walk during the summer. I would, I would like, I'd, I'd, I'd clock out, I'd put in my headphones, I'd start walking. Normally I'd walk to like a gas station and pick up like cherry sours and a zero calorie rock star that was my lunch i'm not saying i was healthy that was just what i like to have normally the fruit punch flavor um punch is what they call it in the zero calorie version um but so I, you know i'd listen to that and i just remember walking through the streets just like trying not to actively die laughing it was they're they're fantastic and they do tell a good you know good story but it is it's a good podcast and they do give a lot of really great um, book recommendations when it comes to true crime and stuff like that with all this podcast i never would have heard of like devil's knot obviously but also pandram journals um jeff Gwynn, who was one of the best true crime authors out there you know he's got a jonestown book he's got a manson book he's got a bonnie and clyde book um i, I know they've done episodes in bonnie and clyde i i haven't listened to them yet i'm sure they use Gwynn's book because Gwynn is a fantastic true crime author but yeah, no, it's a fantastic podcast. And if you're into true crime, and if it's a true crime comedy podcast, if you're into true crime and you're not super serious about it, like if you don't think that, if, if you're not going to be offended by them making jokes while they're talking about it, I would definitely check it out. Not that I, not, not that you need me to recommend it to you, because it's honestly one of the most popular podcasts ever. But yes, that is it. That is just me gushing about the last podcast on the left. Oh man. I've been listening to it lately because I'm teaching now and I have a 45 minute commute in the mornings um and in the mornings my radio station that I listen to has a talk show that I don't like so I've been I got a one of those little cassette aux cord things so I popped it into my cassette player because even though I did say that I got a new car uh I'm waiting on license plates still for that so I'm still driving the Grand Marquis but I pop in the cassette I, and I just listen to it every morning and it's it's a lot of fun um but yes that is all for today I will see you later and